All right, hey everybody, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining me. Always fun to find a few minutes to hang out and chat with you guys. Uh, I, I was reading the comments, lots of great comments on the last video. Uh, really, really appreciate it, uh, talking about, you know, possibly, you know, the idea of buying Screw Attack back. And you guys were obviously very enthused about that. And I, I really, uh, it says a lot about uh, your thoughts on Screw Attack, the, uh, you know, what it did and, and the giant shadow it cast on the gaming industry uh, at the time. And uh, that, that it's still there in a weird way, which is crazy to think about. Um, Oh, uh, I, watching, I, I like to be in the, uh, in the chat when these premiere, which this is a live premiere. It's not live. So spoiler, a guy who says hi, asking, asking me for, to say hi back. Hi, good to see you. <laughs> um, but, uh, review tech USA, uh, thank you so much for being a, uh, for the super chat during the, uh, during the premiere and same with you, Dominic Archuleta. I just want to personally say thank you to you guys. Uh, your super chats are uh, greatly appreciated during premieres, uh, and they go so much, they go uh, very, very far. Um, so thank you very much. Greatly appreciate that. Um, so I, I wanted to, you know, like I said, your feedback on the screw tech stuff was outstanding. Like I said, tons of comments, tons of conversation, and it was exciting to hear, uh, you guys talk about the idea of like, well, yeah, you guys, you, you shouldn't bring it back. If you ever had a, if you ever had an opportunity, you should just, Release the old stuff, which uh, it was cool to see that validation from you guys and the thought process on that, because the last thing I'd want to do is screw up, screw everything up. I screw up enough stuff on a day-to-day -day basis anyway. So um, let's talk about the NFL for a second. I know uh, some of you guys aren't from the United States, but you didn't, you didn't watch the NFL. The NFL just had probably one of the best weekends it's ever had. Um, I uh, watching, watching sports like I have my entire life, you... You long for excitement in sports. That's why we watch sports. It's it's the excitement. It's it's the build. There's a story in sports where, you know, the story starts at the beginning or the leading up to the start of the game, and then throughout the game you have these ebbs and flows. These the thought process of oh we suck. Oh we're the best, and it's so much fun to go on those rides. Even if you don't have a rooting interest in the game, it's always fun to watch really competitive story driven games which is we saw four really really different games but four really diverse games that were they were different but they all had great results uh the two i want to talk about in particular uh the chiefs bills which ended in overtime which man i know i'm not the first to say this but my god do they have to get rid of that rule the nfl does that was so stupid the idea that the chiefs won essentially on a coin toss the idea that josh allen who played balls crazy like they get the lead with two minutes to go they lose the lead with a minute to go they get the lead with 13 seconds to go and they still and then the chiefs at josh allen for the bills no fault of his own never touches the ball again and they lose like, ah, I can't even believe it. But a lot of people are crediting, uh, you know, Mahomes uh, and, and KC. Look, they're studs. They've been studs all year outside of, like, starting slow. But you've seen a lot of Super Bowl teams start slow at the beginning of the year and just turn it on and uh, decimate. That's, what, that's what's happening right now in Kansas City. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you my picks for the weekend here in just a second, so you better stay tuned. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see... Uh, see what happens there. And if the NFL adjusts their rules based off of, uh, I, I don't know, has there been blowback based off of the KC Bills game? Uh, uh, the idea of changing the overtime rules? Because I'm sure the entire, uh, the entire community of upstate New York is just pissed that the Bills didn't get a chance to touch the ball. Either way, congratulations to the Chiefs. Um, a lot, I see a lot of people like ragging on, ragging on um, Green Bay, specifically Aaron Rodgers for losing the Green Bay San Francisco game. Like, San Francisco is just that team, man. They're, they're, like, you want to talk about, like, a team of destiny, right? They effed up the Cowboys last week. Effed them up. And this week, they didn't even score a stinking touchdown. And, like, solely because the weather sucked did San Francisco win. Like, they had no business being in that game. And But I'll say this, you know, uh, Green Bay didn't move the ball. And... Ultimately, it's their fault. But when you when you win the game off two field goals and a blocked punt, like I I can't take you seriously going into the conference finals. Like I can't take you seriously. I, I yes, they're this team of destiny to get past two teams. They've had a lot of things play in their favor, um, but I I think that's where their storybook ends uh, with with the Niners. Uh, my my picks for next weekend, I think. Kansas City obliterates the Bengals, which I think the Bengals are a great story as well. 
But I think they're at that point in their in their uh, sports life as a franchise where they have to run before they sprint or walk before they whatever. You know what I'm saying? The idea that they, they need to get to the conference finals, lose, and then continue to build, um, which I think that will have. But at the end of the day, they're playing Kansas City, man. Kansas City, God, like they're built. They won. They they got the they got the uh, MVP, our previous MVP on their team. He may be the MVP next year or this year. I don't know. Mahomes is a stud. But man, can we talk about Tyreek Hill? Golly, he's so fast. Speaking of, by the way, just total side note. I was watching the um, I was watching the knees over toes guy. He was on Joe Rogan, and uh, I don't watch Joe Rogan a lot. Uh, I I you know I've probably watched four episodes of Joe Rogan totally, but I know he's obviously insanely popular, and I respect what he's built. Uh, just from being himself, which is very, very cool. But the knees over toes guy, uh, I started looking at his exercises and there's this video of Tyreek Hill doing this. There's this one exercise where you put your feet right here and you lean up or you, you start up here and your feet are under here and you, and you bend down and you come back up and it's all used to your hamstrings back here. I tried doing that. It's, it's, it looks so easy, so easy. But it's the hardest stinking thing ever. And Tyreek Hill goes all the way down and all the way up. And I go, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm 40. Anyways, uh, I got the Chiefs over uh, over the whoever they're playing, uh, the Bengals. And in the NFC, uh, I think that uh, the Rams just take a poo poo over all over uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. I think this is where the the Niners season ends. I think we're going to see a Kansas City LA final, which uh, will be very interesting considering Kansas City. You know, Kansas City, Missouri, Kansas City, Kansas. It's right there on the line. Uh, the somewhat close ties to the, uh, you know, the St. Louis Rams. There's kind of this, you know, you know, you know, the, the, the move, whatever. Anyways, uh, that'll be interesting to kind of see how that happens. Um, okay, next thing. Have you been like keeping an eye on like crypto and the stock market? Like, what the hell is happening? I, I, I don't even know what to say about that. But I know we got a lot of people who, uh, who watch uh, crypto, who invest in crypto. And, uh, you know, it's obviously seeing a big dip and you're seeing the big crypto crash right now. And it's, it's tough to watch. I got my Coinbase account and it's like, ooh. Uh, if you are, are suffering through the crypto crash and watching, the, uh, watching all your investments just get decimated by the stock market right now, um, let me know in the comments how bad you feel. Because it's tough to watch. It, look, it's going to bounce. It's going to bounce back. It always happens. There's, there's highs and lows and dips and valleys. But at the end of it, you just got to stay the course, specifically with the stock market. Crypto, eh, who knows? <laughs> who knows? Uh, yeah, but I think ultimately it'll be, you know, things will recover in the long run. Uh, but but the uh, the stock market crash, that's, that's it's, you know, it's down, what, like 10%? That's crazy in the last, like, uh, last couple of weeks. Um, I just want to remind you guys. Twitter is not real life. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't go on social media a whole lot, but every once in a while I'll get a link back to Twitter. Somebody will send something to me. I'll, it'll see something on Discord and I'll end up going down the rabbit hole of Twitter. It's one of the reasons why I'm not on Twitter. Um, I, you know, it's funny. I actually uh, reclaimed the old Stuttering Craig Twitter account recently. Uh, I do not plan on posting on it. Um, I, I have very little intention of posting anything, but I just thought it'd be good to have it. Uh, because as soon as I canceled the Craig, the old Craig Skits Twitter account, somebody went in and was like, I'm going to grab it. <laughs> it's like, okay, I don't care. So I, so I have access to the stuttering Craig Twitter account. Anyways, I'm not going to use it, but if you want to go follow it, by all means, um, you will never see me post anything on there. But, um, I, I just am constantly reminded that Twitter is just a giant cesspool of filth. <laughs> Every time I'm on there, it's like if, if all the worst people got on Twitter and started talking about things and they all started agreeing with each other and only each other and didn't want to hear anybody else. That's what Twitter is. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not saying that if you're on Twitter, you're a bad person. I'm not saying that at all. I mean, it's, it's like a car crash. That's, that's what it is. It's just this filthy, dirty, fiery, mangled car crash with ladies screaming, like, oh my God. And the kids scream in the back, oh my God. You know, the dad, I got to get the kids out. That's what Twitter is. It's insane. So um, it's just not real life. And people think that Twitter is real life and social media is real life. And it's not. Um, there's too much, they have too much say in what is posted and what is not posted. It's too much of an echo chamber, left or right. 
uh, or center, you know, th that's really what all this is, right? You go on YouTube and you're, you're watching my videos. Chances are you probably watch some other retro game videos or you watch some, you know, whatever, right? That's just how it works. It's this algorithm that, that is constantly spoon feeding you yummy. And uh, it's, it's, it's messy, man. It's messy. There's a, there's a place for social media, but if we can turn, turn it back about 10 years, like that's the sweet spot, you know, before things got a little nuts. Uh, so look, Twitter, sorry, you're, you're, you're still messy and dirty and gross. Um, can I talk about, <laughs> I got two more things for you guys. So hang tight. I, I, I'm going to go back to sports for a second. I saw this, I saw a headline in ESPN. There was an NCAA record set for most points in a women's college basketball game. Her, the lady, uh, the, her, the young lady is Aoki, Aoki Lee. She plays for Kansas State. So I was like, wow, that's got to be pretty awesome. 61 points. That's really impressive. And I, I, look, I spent 60 seconds, a full 60 seconds, I watched the entire highlight reel of this extravaganza of 61 points. And I got to be honest, and I'm going to say this as a father of two daughters, both who play basketball, it was the most boring 61 points I've ever seen in my entire life. It was God awful boring. <laughs> like you want to know why it didn't receive any publicity anywhere else outside of like ESPN. You know, ESPN's like, oh yay, 61 points. It was like you want to talk. What it was was she'd stand down on the block, like not even on the block, like right underneath the basket, because she's so big and so wide and so strong that the girls couldn't get around her. So she'd get it, turn, and make the six-inch shot and get two points. Now, she had like 15 free throws as well, of course, because she's getting fouled. It looked, it looked like Shaq, just without all the athleticism and dunks. That's what it looked like. So if you want to know what 61 points looks like, just imagine you going to the corner of the backboard, standing right underneath the goal, and doing this for like, you know, 20 times, and then adding like 15 free throws to that. That's essentially what it looked like. So anyways, congratulations, Aoki Lee. I, it's not your fault, right? Women's basketball is just really boring. And once again, I say this as somebody who coaches little girls basketball, right? And with two daughters, I'm sorry. It's just not fun to watch. It never has been. It probably never will be. Um, you know, I, uh, sorry if you find that offensive. It's, I, I'm not alone. Look at the WNBA's ratings and attendance and everything else in between. So, uh, anyways, okay. Hey, I, I was reading the comments and I, I love this. Um, it was, uh, the gorilla gamer says, uh, when game spy died, Screw Attack became my go-to source for video game news. Too good to be true, though. Sorry, Gorilla Gamer. Uh, that, that got me thinking, though, because it, number one, the idea of Screw Attack being your go-to source for news is hilarious. Um, yeah, outside of like hard news, we didn't. Well, I guess we did try to do news for a while, but um, but it's funny to think that like we were somebody's news source when we never, you know, that wasn't like the goal at all. Um, Anyways, I, it got me thinking about like GameSpy and GameVideos.com. And, you know, we're talking about G4 was, we talked about that a little bit last video and how crazy that was. I want to know what your favorite website, like obviously outside of ScrewAttack, what's your favorite website that doesn't exist anymore? Put it down in the comments because I, I want this to be a nostalgia blast, right? Maybe, it, maybe something that had, that was prominent in the early 2000s, late 2000s, early early 2010s, uh, put it down there. I would love because right now, look, everything's been gobbled up. You know, you, you got YouTube, and that's it, right? And obviously, there's there's other uh, platforms. There's Odyssey and Rumble, and and uh, but really, for the most part, if you know, you have to use YouTube as a billboard. It's the second biggest search engine in the world behind Google, right? Um, but I would love to hear just from a video perspective, whether it's video or text or whatever, just put it down below. I, I think that's really fascinating to see how many amazing, um, culture changing websites have come and gone in the last 15 years, 20 years, whatever it may be. Uh, but yeah, put them on down there. I think it's really, really cool. All right. That's all I got for this week. Once again, or this week, or I guess today, uh, I don't, like I said, I have no schedule with these things. I'll pop in whenever I can. Uh, but once, if you did super chat here, I will absolutely let you know and uh, tell you much. I appreciate it going into uh, the next video, whenever that may be. Uh, last video, once again, Rich from Review Tech USA. Thank you very much, buddy. It's always a pleasure to see you. And uh, Dominic Ar Archuleta, thank you very much for your super chat last video. Uh, so guys, I hope you have a great day. Uh, kick some serious ass, whatever it is you're doing. If you guys got a goal, go get it. Remember, people are going to try to bring you down. Don't 
let them. I'll see you guys later on. Bye-bye.